And the New York Daily News ran an article yesterday that said House Speaker Nancy Pelosi backed up California Rep, excuse me, California Rep Maxine Waters on Monday, arguing that the Democratic Congresswoman absolutely did not try to stoke violence by calling on Black Lives Matter protesters to get more confrontational. She went on to say, no, I don't think she should apologize. And that was in response to our newly elected congresswoman from the 10th Congressional District, Lisa McLean, who called on Waters publicly on the House floor to apologize for inciting violence after the trial and breaking, especially breaking the law and appearing after curfew in Minnesota. Now, what's interesting is what made a real splash in the news. Pelosi went on to refer to our congresswoman, Lisa McLean, as that woman from Michigan, which drew a quick response from our next guest. It's my pleasure to introduce to you that woman from Michigan, Congresswoman Lisa McLean. How are you, Lisa? I'm great, Rocky. How are you? Well, it's fantastic to have you on. We're dying to know, what did you say to get under the skin of the Speaker Pelosi? Well, I just spoke the truth. And uh, apparently the Democrats have a little trouble with... uh, the rules of the game and both parties playing by the same rules of the game. You know, I often say if it wasn't for double standards, we wouldn't have any standards at all. (laughs) That's true. I've said that uh, before too. (laughs) I mean, I merely pointed out the fact that Maxine Waters flies to Minneapolis and and actually asks for more confrontation, go out and get more confrontational. Okay. We had that same issue happen with Congressman, uh, Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. They stripped her of her committee assignment. I mean, look at the hubbub around President Trump for inciting violence. All I'm asking is, let's play by the same rules. Shouldn't, shouldn't we? I mean, typically we do. Uh, we've seen it happen before. In fact, we, we doubled down, and Kevin McCarthy put a motion last night on the floor to, to talk about it and to censor her, not one Democrat, not one Democrat voted to even hear the argument. To me, that's extremely sad. And yeah, you, it, it's yeah, you not bring up play a, well. You bring up a very valid point that Marjorie Green, the, the congresswoman from Georgia, who did not per se incite violence. They, they actually had less information and less evidence on Marjorie Green, but yet they stripped her of her committees and actually wanted to censure her and kick her out of the House. But they and wouldn't do that to Maxine Waters. Right, and let's not forget those comments were said prior to, prior to Marjorie Taylor Green coming to Congress. And my point is, let's just all play by the same rules. As politicians, let's try something different. Let's try the truth and some consistency. I think we'd all be better. Yeah, that's true. Now, you've been in Washington for for now about four months. What's the biggest thing that you've experienced that you didn't expect? Besides hypocrisy. it, it, It is the hypocrisy. It's the double standards. But I will say this, and with all due respect, if we could get the TV cameras out of the way, we as politicians and as legislatures and as congressmen and women, we truly are closer together than we are apart. I mean, you have your extremes on both ends, no question. But if you can just get that media and the TV cameras out of the way, we really do care about this country and want it to move forward in a positive fashion. So you would say that the 24-hour news cycle is really destroying our country and that a majority of these people actually do care about their country? Absolutely. And the issue is it's the, it's the sexy news story that gets the headlines. And, and I'll say this is on Saturday I did a press conference about, uh, with the farmers as it pertains to the estate, uh, estate tax issue. It got very little play, very, very little play. But I get in a cat fight with Nancy Pelosi, and it goes viral. (laughs) You know, the media at times controls the narrative, and and the media used to present the facts. Now it's more entertainment. 
right? And I don't mean that any disrespect. I, I really, I really and truly don't. Is no, there's there's just, no disrespect taken. WJR has an open airway where where all the voices and all the opinions are always heard. So there's no disrespect taken. But that's interesting that that you bring up the the fact that when it bleeds, it leads. And that they're always looking for for sexy topics to talk about in the news media. But what's interesting is when you say that most of these people actually care about public policy, then they if they really cared, if they really were interested in public policy, then they wouldn't play to those cameras. They'd be more like you dealing with the issues of the day. Would they not? You would think, but I will share with you the the leadership from Nancy Pelosi is very dictatorial in nature and it's very difficult to step outside that box when you have a dictator where um, Kevin McCarthy allows us to represent our district and do what's best for our constituents in our district um, at times the Republican Party has been criticized for not falling into lockstep yeah. But our districts are different. Our states are different. And at the end of the day, we represent the people of our district. We don't represent the leader. Yeah, that's very true. Listen, in the last minute of our time with you, uh, Representative Lisa McLean, that woman from Michigan, what are you working on now? Well, right now, um, I'm really working on this estate planning uh, or estate tax issue with the farming community if that bill passes or that proposal passes and that sees the light of day it's going to devastate the family farms and i'm working across the aisles and we're getting some traction on that Um, i'm i'm going with the narrative that it is an unintended consequence and we just need to revamp it a little bit so that's one of the things thank you congresswoman lisa mclean Have a good day. Thank you, Lisa McLean, that woman from Michigan.